You join me today at the wheel of another Mercedes, and that's another open top Mercedes at that. Yes, I am today driving a 2002 CLK 320, and this car is currently for sale at Stone Cold Classics at Rutum in Kent. So head on over to their website and have a quick look, see what else is on stock as well. Meanwhile, if you like reviews and drives in interesting and slightly less common cars, then please do hit the subscribe button down below and hit the bell notification to find out when more new interesting things are happening. Hello, welcome to Furious Driving, and now that autumn is quite clearly upon us as leaves actually quite usefully fall into shot, on command almost. Now is the perfect time to put the roof down and take a convertible out for a drive. And yes, this is a 2002 Mercedes CLK 320 with the roof down. This, the first generation CLK, ran from 1997 to 2003. And it was available in two body styles, a folding soft top convertible and a hard top coupe, A208 and C208. C for coupe, an airy top or something, whatever German is for convertible. And being a CLK, it is of course based on the C-Class platform of saloon cars. Although the body is very E-Class and it does use some E-Class parts, it rides on the W202 platform. And the W203 chassis, which came out in 2000, had the eggshell double fried egg headlamps. And this styling is carried over onto the coupe, although with more separate headlamps, which ape more of the E-Class, because being a coupe and a convertible, we're going for the high-end look rather than the mid-range saloon look. And this being an avant-garde, we do of course have the Mercedes three-pointed star target, so if you want to hit stuff, you aim with that. Now that combination of C-Class and E-Class elegant flowing lines does continue into the side where early noughties design was carrying on from uh, well, all of the 90s design. Lots of curves, flowing lines, that was very much the order of the day. So we have these very curvaceous wing mirrors which now have the fully integrated indicator lights. This is quite an achievement in the early noughties, not in terms of technology, but certainly in terms of shock and wow factor. Also wow factor, we've got little sensors in the door handle so we can keylessly enter the car if we want to. And this does look quite aggressive with the body kit and the AMG alloys. This looks very, very stanced almost. But it's also still a very clean and elegant design. Especially as you come around the back and you have, well, behind all of the full-size four seats in here. So it's a full-size four-seater pretty much, a little bit tight on the rear legroom. But this little deck area here, which covers up over the hood, does give it a very strong racing design element. It's a bit like the uh, Porsche Speedster rear area behind the seats. And with the roof down, this is very elegant indeed. The roof completely hides underneath this lifting cover. It's all electric, so you push one button, this lifts up, the roof goes that, that goes down again. Easy as I like and then it's very very simple and elegant and of course with the windows down let's find those window switches they are frameless windows and once it goes down it's pillarless so you have a clean sweep all the way to the back of the car how pretty is that Around the back, as well as this very elegant, I love this bit so much, this cover for the hood, we do have a little lip, almost a semi-spoiler, pressed into the boot lid, and of course the third brake light also pushed in the boot lid as well, because safety is important. Perhaps the element that's aged least well of the entire car are these tail lights, which are lifted straight from the E-Class in terms of design, but they, these are the one bit that look perhaps a little bit older and out of date compared with everything else, which does kind of still have that look of, or oh, 90s retroness. Now, if we pop the hood, we'll find anything from an inline four up to a V8. In this case, though, we've got the M112, V6, this being the 320. This is a nice compromise between practicality and performance, and it does sound rather nice as well. In standard tune, this thing has got 221 horsepower, 310 newton meters of torque, and it will throw the car at the scenery up to 60 in 7.9 seconds, which is more than adequate for a car you're meant to be cruising the boulevards in. Now, I have said many times before, that I'm a big fan of a red interior, but this takes that theme and runs with it, and it runs fast and far. Look at everything in here, which is oh so red. The black detailing and the dark wood does add a touch of interest, class, panache, mystery even, an air of mystery, we'll go with that. But just check out the shape and the color of this plastic. This could not be more 1990s if Millie Vanilli was sitting in the interior singing to or miming along with the radio but it is quite the combination really, isn't it? So on the door cards, they're heavily sculpted. We've got a big armrest, a solid door pull, this lovely solid chrome door handle, which I think we've seen in the 203 or possibly a 202, maybe even the 204 is in a development of this as well. But it's a little pyramidal uh, shaped solid chrome door handle into this beautiful 
dark, I'm gonna go bird's eye maple, who knows what kind of wood this is. Then we've got the black, then the red, more red, much more red, more wood, electric seats here in the door. So easy to find, easy to see and adjust. Elsewhere in the door, we've got our tweeters, our mid ranges carpeted at the bottom, carpeted into the door pocket. So there's no rattling and that's the uh, rubbery effect stuff here. So it's all, again, rattle free, which is very nice. The seats themselves, whoa, look at this red and black combo. It is a little bit in your face, but if you like a strong interior, and bear in mind, this is a convertible. So if you're gonna do a convertible, it needs to be a strong combo. You've got the silver for elegance and style, then you've got the red for a bit of wow, look at me, which is where convertibles go, isn't it? I've done this, as we know, with Quentin, the silver Rover with the red roof, very much following the same bit of style, bit of wow factor. And then climb in and it feels well. First of all, the, the squab is quite low and these bolsters really do grip you nice and strong and firmly so you're not rocking around if you are gonna throw the car around. Although it's not about that, it's a convertible. So we're looking into the dashboard. Uh, there's not much in the way of a T-shelf. It is the reddest area of bad T-shelf you've ever seen. Um, it's just, just so very red. We've got the airbag on the left-hand side, so again, so no snacks over there. More air vents over here, which are still more Milli Vanilli plastic. And we have more of this dark wood. And this is interesting. This is a very interesting addition I've noticed. If I put the engine on, these here in the center, and over to the right are your parking distance um, readouts showing you how far you are from crashing into stuff which is quite the unusual style and everything from the top of the dashboard is very again curvaceous and swooping it is very much the 1990s has come to say hello in the noughties this center section sweeps back elegantly let's go back up here to the dials though these are very much mercedes all over and although these are obviously totally different clocks to the w123 w124 the font the needle even that big center black plastic bit all look like they've been lifted from that playbook of those earlier solid famous cars of course it's now a different printing process different mechanically inside and we've got the digital readouts in the bottom as well so it's all a little bit different and a little bit new moving back to the stalks it's very much mercedes all over here the uh, cruise control is on a separate stalk that you can just see in your eye line above the steering wheel and everything else at all in the world including making the toast and coffee is on this other stalk here which is the indicators lights uh, wipers you name it it's on this one stalk which people new to the brand generally hate also generally hated by people new to the brand is the fact it's got the parking brake down here to the left of the um, well, where the clutch would be if it was a proper gearbox and released with a handbrake over here very confusing steering wheel itself big round more red leather and we love in the red leather these buttons do control many computer items up on the dashboard so you can run through all your different things but it just feels like something from a different decade. If you go and pull your old computer out of the loft, it's got that kind of feeling about it, a little bit of nostalgia, but it is the embryonic form of steering wheel controls. It's all quite interesting. Even got telephone controls in here. This car was an expensive car and very loaded. We do also have the horn on the steering wheel, so let's give that a go. Wow, that's bigger than Parpy. We need a new word. That's blatantly Parpy. Now, continuing with Mercedes ishness over to the side, pull and double pull for fog lights and parking lights, which Mercedes do persist with doing, which is a wonderful thing, which so many people don't bother doing with anymore. Over back to the center, we've got more of this lovely wood. This one amusingly at the top button is um, actually for the rear headrests. So if you've not got passengers back there, you can recline your headrests, make those go away. So you don't need to look at those. Central locking alarm stuff, all our heating controls, and then Mercedes-Benz CD head unit, very, very swank. A little bit of a cubby hole, which is rubberized, so you can put things in there and they won't rattle again. All very, very swank indeed. More dark, sophisticated wood. Reveals the ashtray, or sweetie wrapper zone. And there's so many buttons around the gear shift. This, of course, is an automatic. It's the five-speed auto. Um, again, with more red leather, making this just so, so stand out, so different. This is, I don't know if this is, I'm gonna say unique car. I don't know if this is a, this is an avant-garde. So someone's chucked a lot of money at spec in this thing. But then on top of that, I don't know if this is a, um, a custom color option they've gone with. But yeah, we've got uh, window controls, four separate window controls here, mirror controls, boot release. ESP off, parking sensors, oh, it's just buttons, 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 and they're big buttons as well, as if this is maybe aimed at the American market or something. 
they like the big buttons over in America. Then we've got lots of storage. Being a convertible, you do need to be tucking things away. So under this sophisticated bit of dark wood, we've got a big cubby hole. Then behind here, we've got a double cubby. For the left-hand tag, we've got a big space at the bottom, which does reveal there's a smaller space above it. Pull that, and it's like one of those magic tricks. It's like Paul Daniels has come and designed a car. Paul Daniels, if you're in America or elsewhere in the world, was a very famous TV stage magician. Right, now, the back of the car I won't climb into because although it is a proper four-seater, there's not much in the way of legroom, but we do have these same rather wonderful black and red leather seats which just look the best. They are the bee's knees, the dog's business, whatever you want to call it, they look fantastic. And this soft, perforated leather, it's quite hard surface, but it feels very soft when you sit in it. Cleverly done, well played Mercedes, well played. So, pulling away with the big V6 in front is just so effortless. This car really is a luxury cruiser more than anything else. And the suspension, that does feel very nice. Now, it's a fairly safe thing to say that the German-built Mercedes are definitely the best-built Mercedes. And these ones all came out of either Bremen or Osnabrück, so you know you're in for a fairly solid old bus. Even if the early noughties wasn't the high point of Mercedes uh, quality control. Even with the automatic, it is pretty rapid. Uphill, that's 60 already. It does not hang around at all. There was only one gearbox option, which is this five-speed auto. But it shuffles through so imperceptibly, you can only really tell from the engine note and the rev counter going up and down that you're changing gears. Now, despite having the roof lopped off, there is still very, very good body control on this car and almost no scuttle shake at all. It takes a, a bad bump in the road, really poor surface to make it feel even vaguely wobbly and disconnected. Under us is all independent suspension with front double wishbones. A multi-link in the rear. It's all pretty clever stuff. It does have a fairly firm ride, but being a Mercedes is all about comfort. So it's not like a BMW M car where it's rock hard and just waiting to be chucked sideways and spanked through with the back wheels spinning. It's more about being comfortable, getting where you're going, in a state of relaxation and dignity. So you gotta feel good and look good doing it. The range was facelifted in 1999, adding elegance and avant-garde, which replaced the sport trim level. Oh. And we come up to halt, and just the lightest burble from that V6. It's all about control, sobriety, dignity, being grown up and sensible and enjoying a very fine car. <laughs> that does sound nice though, that V6 has got a lovely note to it. The steering is quite light. It's a big wheel and you'd think it might feel a bit heavy and cumbersome, but it really doesn't. It's uh, very easy to, to waft around in. And the pedals have got kind of a soft feel to them as well. Almost like a sprung feeling underfoot as you push the accelerator and then the brake. And the brakes do bite very hard indeed. Of course, this is quite an unusual uh, car format, the four-seater convertible. There really aren't that many of them. You can kind of count the rivals on the finger of one foot because most convertibles tend to be just a two-seater. The Rover 200 convertible was long gone, as was the 306 and the Escort. I think there was the Focus CC around the same time. That was in a different pull bark entirely. Also from the Germans, we had the uh, Audi A4 and A3 convertibles and the Golf convertible, again, being a bit smaller than this. And the E46 3 Series, but these were just converted saloons. There was a Peugeot convertible at the same time, but really not much else. There were very few things to rival this, and certainly not in terms of the class of car as well. 
If you want to go up a couple of notches, then you could have gone for a big old Rolls Royce convertible. As I've said on numerous occasions in the past, I'm not a huge convertible fan, I'll be honest about that. But if I was going to go for one, I think I'll be looking at maybe something like this because it has the feel of a closed car. It's got the solidity and the lack of scuttle shake. And of course, being a Mercedes, the roof doesn't leak, which is often a problem on a convertible. I know we shouldn't be tiring Mercedes with Fiat brushes, but we have owned two Fiat convertibles and both of them have leaked horrifically. But weirdly, my Rover 200 convertible does not leak a drop of water. Who knew? It's nice, you really don't get buffeted by this thing either. The wind is fairly still in here with the windows up. There's just a little bit of a breeze blowing around the top of my head, but not much else. It's really quite dignified. Well, thank you for joining me today here in the CLK. It is a luxurious and comfortable place to be. Uh, some people might think the red is a bit too in your face, but for me, but for me, there's not much better than a red leather interior in a car. It's just the best. So I'm quite a fan of this thing. And I'm liking it quite a lot. If you enjoyed this, please do hit like and subscribe as always. And join me again next time driving something completely different. Mm-hmm.